Guys, hope you're good. Good to see you. Um, did Colossians last few weeks. Uh, this week we're going to be doing Philemon. So please go and give Philemon a, a read. Uh, it's a book in the Bible. You should be able to read it in about 10 minutes. Quite a quick book. Um, and I'd like you then just to, after you've read it, just to pray. Well, pray beforehand um, and ask God just that he speaks to you through it. And then I want you to read it. And then I want you to sit and wait on it and wait on God and pray. And just ask God to speak to you through it. Because um, I feel whether God speaks to me, he also speaks to you. And we're going to talk about that partnership in a minute as we get into this. So, uh, yeah, please do that. Switch me off. Switch it back on. So, Philemon, uh, written by Paul, letter to a guy called Philemon. Written at the same time as he wrote Colossians. He was in prison, 60 AD. And uh, he's writing to Philemon, who is one of the uh, leaders of the church in Colossae. In fact, Philemon, we see, um, has uh, a church meeting in his home. And Paul opens the letter saying hi to him, thanking him, but also thanking his wife and who we think when he says soldier is his son. Uh, he's thanking the whole family. Philemon is a man of stature within Colossae and he's clearly got some money as well. And as is normal at that time, uh, he has a slave. Uh, slaves, uh, AD 60, if you were, were a Greek or a Roman, if you had wealth, then a slave is what you had. You would have slaves. Um, it was like us having TVs or having cars. Uh, you would obviously have them. And, and, and there would be a suggestion of how could you live without them. And uh, we know Philemon has slaves. And we find out that Philemon in here, one of his slaves has escaped, has run away, uh, Onesimus. And we find out that Onesimus has, has run away from Philemon. Probably, probably, why has he run away? Well, he's probably run away because he's, he's done something wrong. He's had a falling out. Their relationship is broken. You've got Philemon on Onesimus and their relationship has been broken. Onesimus has run away and has now come and met Paul. Um, and maybe he's heard about Paul in being in that household. He may have heard about Paul, Philemon and his family talking about this good guy, and he's gone to him. And there, Paul has told him about Jesus, and Philemon has become a Christian, he's come to faith, and he's worked alongside Paul. But Paul now finds himself in a tricky situation. He has a slave who has not been released by his master, but instead has run away. And Philemon would have complete right to put Onesimus in prison when he found him, um, uh, possibly got him killed, uh, got rid of him, shoved him in prison. That would have been of his right. Uh, and we find Paul here writing to Philemon, basically saying, I'm sending him back, but I'm not sending him back as a slave. I'm sending him back to be a partner of yours essentially to be with family and, and Paul goes on to explain in this letter that actually through Jesus there is no difference between Philemon being a slave and that, that's not relevant anymore what is relevant is that Philemon loves Jesus so therefore we are brothers together and he uses is the word in verse six um um kunoina, which uh, I think is translated as partnership and there's this partnership with them, that they're, they're together. And he sort of says to him, Philemon, you are the same as me, Paul, because we love Jesus, probably of a similar social standing. But also, you are equal and in partnership with Onesimus. And if you look back to Colossians chapter 3, verse, verse 11, which we've looked at a couple of weeks ago, here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. That's what it says in Colossians 3.11. Paul is making the point that we are equal. There is no better standing or lower standing. We are equal. And he's, he's basically telling Philemon to welcome Onesimus back as an equal which would have been completely and utterly out there. If all the other slaves discover they follow Jesus, then they're no longer slaves, then they would all start doing this, wouldn't they? And there's all this stuff going on in the background, but, but Paul is making the point that because they are a Chris, he is now a Christian, 
we are equal and are together. And that resonates a lot in my heart. I'm back, sorry about that. Doorbell went past, I was expecting for church. Um, so where were we? Uh, it's about being equal. And I see loads of Christian groups saying they are better than others and they don't speak well of each other. They don't love each other. They don't support each other. And I sit and I see this and here's Paul saying, as a slave and as a master, you are now equal through Christ. We are equal together with our brothers and sisters. And that is why I'm so committed to working as church within our town, within John Philbin District. We're fortunate to have a load of churches and we all worship the same God and we are equal and we should be doing things together. We should be doing things in partnership. That's why I am here talking to you now, because Embrace is a churches together thing. And, and we welcome young people from all churches in our town and, and wider than that. Um, why? Because we are in partnership together. We are supportive of one another. And that's why Life Drumfield, CIO, that's why I set that up for us to work together as church. So um, this Christmas time, next week, Jess is going to be doing uh, the talk. Um, I hope should be doing it. Um, so I just want to wish you a really happy Christmas and a great new year. And I look forward to seeing you guys back face to face. I know we have the Zoom every week, but actually face to face in church together to pray together, to worship the Lord, to 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 show his to, to, to yeah to be sh showing his kingdom to to others and sharing sharing about him with others. So um, if I don't see you before Christmas, have a great Christmas and I'll see you next year when hopefully this COVID stuff will be sorted at some point. So God bless, keep well, have a good Christmas, New Year. See you soon. Cheers.